Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Tried Out Adventures. My name is Reese, and if you're interested in building your own electrical 12 volt system, then here's the place to be because I'm going to be installing all the solar panels, inverter, control charger, wiring, going through some diagrams and helpful tips for you guys to be able to do it yourself. So stay tuned and let's get stuck into it. Okay, so first things first, I need to measure out and crimp and cut all my wiring. What I'm going to do is I have the batteries already sitting in position in the van and I need to figure out exactly where all my other components are going such as the inverter, the DC uh, fuse box and also the MPPT charger. All I'm going to be using is you see a grinder here that is because this is one odd gauge wire. I don't have wire cutters big enough for those. I have a clamp, safety glasses, a knife, also a heavy duty crimper. You will need one of these. They can also be called a swaging tool. Uh, and then I have a smaller crimping tool for all the smaller wire. But first and foremost, I'm gonna get going on this one odd gauge wire. So I'll go into the van, measure it all up, and let's get cutting. So what you can see here, I've already put the crimp on one of the negative terminals, and I'm just going to, I have already uh, crimped one of these sides of the wire already. I'm gonna put that on the other negative, just so I can get a nice gauge of where this wire is going to measure to. You just wanna make sure that you measure to the inside of the crimp, or the lug, sorry. So I wanna to measure to just about there. That's gonna give me a little bit of flexibility to be able to secure this down, which is nice, because it is nice and thick wire. I'm gonna take that into the workshop, and I'm gonna times this by two, because the positive will be the exact same size. Right, so now that I have that cut back and the outer casing of the cable removed, you can see that is nice and clean, so I'll be able to thread the lug on and crimp it as well. But before we get to that, I wanted to discuss and probably answer your question as to why is this gauge wire so thick. So what I had to do is calculate my entire electrical system's power of max output at one time. So that includes all my 12 volt appliances from my DC power and also my 240 volt from my AC power, which is my inverter. And this is a massive safety measure because if you don't have the right size gauge cable, uh, you can risk burning out your cable and creating an electrical fire. So definitely have a look at other people's YouTube um, videos on cable sizing, they are extremely helpful, but just make sure that you look at all your appliances at once, max output, and that will determine the size that you need to parallel your batteries. And I'll also run this cable to my inverter as well for safety measures. Just wanted to touch on that real quick. We'll get to crimping and I'll show you how I do that. You want your lugs to be facing the right way. So just twist that lugs to where the wire is gonna be sitting from terminal to terminal. Give it a nice little mark so you can see it for your crimp. Otherwise, you'll be going to put your batteries together and you'll have one end flat and one end facing the other way and it's not gonna go together real nice. So just make sure that your lugs are nice and straight to where the other side is and then you'll be able to crimp it and have no worries when you're hooking it up. There you have it, a nice crimped and taped cable. Beautiful. Okay, so there you have it, step one complete. As you can see, the batteries have now been connected in parallel, negative to negative, positive to positive, and we are good to go. I have put the inverter and hung it in its permanent position, and as you can see, I have run a negative line to the negative terminal on the left battery just for some measurement purposes. But really quickly, I wanted to talk about when you parallel a battery, what terminals you should be using. Think of the electrical system as a complete circuit of power. You have created a giant battery by paralleling these up. So you want to use the negative from one battery, which I am going to for the inverter here, and use the positive from that battery. That way I am using the full capacity. So just be mindful of that when connecting your batteries in parallel and hooking up your complete unit. 
All right, so I'm done with my sizing and measuring and crimping for the one aught gauge wire. So that is just the parallel connections of the batteries and connecting the batteries to the inverter. And as you can see, I haven't connected any of those to the terminal yet. It's okay, the batteries are in storage life mode anyways. But I'm just about to go ahead and mount the controller, breaker and fuse box. And then I'll go ahead and measure and cut everything to size for that. Now that I've connected up the DC fuse box, the batteries, and also the inverter, I need to go ahead and connect the solar charger. Renergy send through two cables. One end has a lug on it already. The other end is an open line. So what this open line does is it goes into the MPPT charger. It's because I only have one end with a lug, I'm gonna connect that to the battery. They also have sent through one positive cable because that is going to go from the other end of the fuse to the battery and then one of these black cables will go from the fuse to the charger but also i wanted to mention that you have to connect your mppt charger to the batteries before you do anything with the solar panels on the roof you don't want a charge coming through the solar panels into the mppt charger before you connect those to the batteries otherwise it's going to be live you can't stop power coming from the solar panels. So I'm gonna connect those up first and then we're gonna get on the roof and do everything with the solar panels. So we are fully done with the wiring inside the van. As mentioned, I haven't done anything with the solar panels yet on the roof or connected those. We are only connecting the battery, inverter, and the charge controller and the DC fuse box. What I'm gonna do really quickly is connect up the activation cables for the batteries. It has a very light power light on it right now. And that circuit breaker, if I didn't mention before, is broken, so no power will go to the DC. I'm just looking for power to go to the MPPT and see if that lights up. All you have to do really quick to take these batteries out of shelf mode is hold on this power switch. One, two, three. And it's gone nice and bright. And you can see the light on the battery has kicked in. So we have 13 volts running from the battery to the charger. We are going to next take care of the solar on the roof. Let's get into it. As we get going on the solar, I just wanted to kind of spread everything out and show you what I'm working with and how we're gonna connect up these three solar panels. Renergy in the 300 watt solar kit, you get three 100 watt panels. And the way they're gonna link up is they have a male and female plug, one being a negative and one being a positive. And just as they are, they are going to connect positive to negative, positive to negative, and on the outsides you will have one positive and one negative that will run into the van. They will connect up via these two cables here. On the positive end I will also put this inline 12 amp fuse. To connect the panels to the roof itself, Renergy supplies the brackets. They do come with tap-in screws and these screws are specifically made for thicker roofs, not necessarily a van roof that is just very thin um, aluminium metal. I've actually got these stainless steel bolts. I'm gonna drill a bigger hole in the middle of the exterior bracket 
and I'm gonna bolt these to the roof and it's gonna be much more secure. And the way I'm going to attach all of that is using some six seal uh, roof and gutter sealant. And underneath the brackets too, I'll be using some double sided uh, sealing tape. And that's just gonna help uh, create a barrier in between the bracket and the roof and it will stop from vibration and anything like that. I'm gonna go ahead and drill out all these brackets first and then connect them to the bottom of the solar panels and then we'll get them up on the roof for measuring out and cutting some holes. sure if I had mentioned but on one of the days that I didn't film I actually went ahead and stripped the entire roof because my uncle had all the tools necessary for it and it actually turned out really well I stripped basically the whole roof back to bare metal and was able to spray it and paint it and I'm really happy with the way it's turned out once again just peace of mind I've gotten rid of every little piece of rust but I'm gonna go ahead and measure this out real quick and then we'll get the panels up on the roof What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go and drill all the holes out with the brackets on the roof as is and then I'm going to remove the panels. Why I'm doing that is I have to seal those holes. So I'm going to rust proof them and then seal them with an epoxy before I actually put the bolts in. I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes as well for the casing that is going to house the insert of the solar wires into the van. A few important tips. Firstly, I've bought these grommets. It's a little rubber seal that is gonna allow the wire to travel through and into the van, and that is gonna protect it from getting cut by the bare metal. Also, you wanna make sure that you take off the housing or the waterproof sealers, and you need to thread the cable through these and then actually put them through the plastic housing before you put them through the holes. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'm going to rust proof and epoxy all these holes. The seal and the rust proofing has dried in all the holes. Sitting on the ladder right now in a beautiful sunset, as you can see, I'm gonna be out here till basically dark, I believe, putting on these panels, but I am gonna get it done tonight. What I have to do is peel off the double-sided tape first, put a bead of silicon around that double-sided tape, put the brackets onto the roof, and then I will bolt them in one by one, just making sure that I make the connections on the way. solar panels are on the roof and I have run the positive and negative lines out of the panels and they are already threaded down into the roof. I do need to put the inline fuse on that positive line and then I'm just going to put a heavy bead of silicon on this housing and put it down on the roof and then silicon around that as well. The panels are on the roof, they do look awesome. I'm so chuffed. It's so awesome when you do something for yourself for the first time and it just went together really smoothly. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the morning and we'll get wrapped up with this episode. Good morning, day number three on the electrical build. Uh, I have gone ahead and covered the solar panels this morning with the cardboard that I got the panels in. That is just to stop any power coming through the lines because I haven't connected them up yet. 
All I really need to simply do this morning is connect the negative and the positive to the MPPT charger. And then I should be able to remove the covers and we will have power. I'm gonna get stuck into that this morning and then we should be all well and done. Truth, I've just taken the cardboard off the solar panels on the roof so they are in the morning sun. It's not completely lit right now, but as you can see, the light for the solar is on, and you can also see the charging from the solar to the battery on the main screen here. This is the main menu. Battery is at 13.1 volts at the moment, so that is awesome. It was at 13 just before. The next screen we go to is the solar power voltage, so it is currently kicking about 30 volts right now. Next screen will be the charge current to the batteries. It's sitting at around 1.7 right now. Just as I mentioned, the sun isn't fully up at the minute. Battery capacity, we're at 97%. Load current, we don't have any load connected to this and we never will, so that's good to see. Uh, this screen is just accumulated um, amp hours that you have used. Uh, we haven't used anything right now, so that's fine. Control temperature, we're at 24 degrees. Yeah, that's about it. That's just for load and that's just an error screen for any errors and we don't have any errors, so we are all good to go. All right, guys, there you have it. The electrical system is basically complete. The solar system is in, the control charger is in, the inverter is in, so I have 12 volt power and 240 volt power through the inverter. I couldn't be more happy the way this turned out. Yes, I was a little bit nervous going into it, but that's what the whole purpose of this series is to motivate and inspire you to do things for the first time, to try it out. I did months of research going into this. It made me feel a lot more comfortable. Yes, it'll take a little bit longer than you first anticipate because you might have to go back, trial a few things and start over even on a few little pieces and projects. But at the end, you will be so satisfied. I'm so itching to get on the road and use this power. Can't wait to show you guys all the equipment that I'll be using and charging up, especially my camera equipment, sporting equipment, and appliances I'm gonna use on, on the day-to-day, -day, such as a shower, cooking, and all that kind of stuff. Once again, try things out for yourself. I hope this was a huge motivator and it showed you some tips, especially on the electrical side of things. Guys, stay tuned, like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video. It helps me out tremendously and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Take care.